off to Pretoria and the New Zealanders hard at work under a blazing sun in the capital city. Andy Dalton will be making his first appearance on tour. Under him, a team of test match calibre. A tough one. We realised it's going to be a very hard game and uh, we are approaching it in that vein. The danger man, as always, will probably be nice boy. Have you got any special tactics or plans worked out for him? No, nothing special, nothing from any other game. We, we approach every game in the same, uh, with the same attitude and uh, there'll be no different tomorrow. With rugby fever now running at fever pitch, speculation mounted as to how the New Zealanders would cope with the illustrious Blue Bulls. It will be their first meeting with several Springboks, among them fly half Nas Buerta. Buerta, the big match winner with the deadliest boot in world rugby, captain of the Blue Bulls, a one-time American gridiron trialist who'd regained his amateur status. The most controversial player in all South Africa, potentially the biggest factor between victory and defeat. It was to be a bitter battle, and referee Francie Muller would have his hands full. Here they come. That's Andy Dalton in the front. Looks like Victor Simpson behind him. That's Victor Simpson. Loveridge. Shelford. That's Wayne Smith. Ashworth. And here comes Nasbuerta. Wait for the roar. Going to be full back Pierre and Crowley to kick off. <coughs> Lovely kick hanging in the air taken by Louis Moorman. Look at those all black forwards going bashing in there, but back to Nasbuerta. Difficult one and well taken indeed. Mark called for and Uli Schmidt coming up very quickly to the tackle, but it was Kieran Crowley who called for the mark and was given it. And quick one to himself and flips it to his fly half Wayne Smith. Wayne Smith tackled looking for support, but a penalty there for coming in the wrong side of the scrum there. Interesting, Louis Moorman in his first years for Northern Transvaal always st stood the back of the line out. At this time it looks as like Gary Wetton got it back. And a penalty there and a little bit of argy-bargy there. Jan Lock and Cowboy Shaw. And uh, it's Shaw who's penalised. Here is Nice with an opportunity to open the scrum. And is it curling in? Yes, it did. It curled in at the last minute. Big crowds waiting expectantly. That is Billy Osborne with it now. And that could have been an intercept. Not a very good pass by Osborne. Picked up by Mike Clamp. And Clamp inside to Osborne again. And Kieran Crowley with it. And Mexted backing up. Mexted Shelford as well, trying to get it back. But the referee gives a penalty to Northern Transvaal. And the touch judge also put his flag out of pointing to Northern Transvaal side. And the referee will ask him what? I'm all sorted out, all right? Okay. Please. Flag out there. Shut up, crap. It happened just before half time. The teams waging a relentless struggle, neither prepared to give an inch. A line out forms. New Zealanders try line. Andy Hayden going for it. The players emerge from the loose scrum. Andy Dalton giving chase with the West as Dave Loveridge breaks. From behind, the punch, a swinging right cross from Burger Heldenhase, the most lethal blow in the game, from behind. The New Zealand skipper crumples to the deck and slowly gets to his knees. The referee signals and the first aid men and Nas Buerta gather round to have a look. Referee Muller leaves the scene to consult with the touch judge. The name Burger is clearly mentioned. The punch that was to cause an outrage. Andy Hayden sees it, lunges after Heldenhase and lashes out. Dalton departs, bitter realization on his face, the jaw broken in two places, a tour that lasted just 37 minutes. Well, it happened so quickly, I didn't really have time to, uh, to realize what had happened. Uh, now, with uh, several weeks to reflect on it, um, obviously very extremely disappointed not to be part, taking a bigger part in the tour. Uh, it's one of those silly things that sometimes happened, happens in the, uh, the game of rugby, punches out in the open like that. Uh, one of those silly things that should never happen. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty bitter about it now, I suppose. Um, more through the frustration of not being able to play uh, the rugby that I had hoped to uh, when I came over here. 
obviously many of us, including myself, have been looking forward to this tour for, for three years at least, um, particularly so with it being cancelled last year. We've had to work uh, very hard to get here and to only last 36, 37 minutes, uh, that's pretty disappointing. I've been playing international rugby for something like 10 or 11 years and never been hit like that from behind. Um, you know, obviously, sometimes during the game, tempers do get a little, um, a little hot, and you do get the odd punch thrown. But uh, normally, people stand up to you. Um, I think the disappointing thing about it was the fact that Mer Berger uh, um, carried on so much after the event. Uh, if he had just shut up, I think the, he possibly would have been forgotten and uh, would have been to his benefit too. But he seemed to be intent on uh, speaking to the media about the whole issue, which I don't think did him any good. I've never spoken to the man myself, but... Uh, Has he the, uh, not spoken to you since? No, I've never spoken to Bergen, no. Yes, um, what happened on Saturday, I mean, I was in the loose scrum and I I received a blow and, um, and then I retaliated and, and it was in the heat of the moment. So um, the two teams were very highly motivated and that sort of thing happens. And, um, I mean, I'm sorry I, his jaw was broken, but I mean... There was a lot of punches thrown and nothing, and no other jaws were broken, so it was just a pure accident. We were disappointed to lose our skipper. Um, he had a big effect on, on the tour, uh, even after his jaw was broken, and I'm sure he would have had an even bigger, bigger effect had he been playing. We wanted to get over the initial blow to the side and get the morale back up again. The cry, ban Burger Heldenhays, is trumpeted throughout the land. Danny Craven calls a joint meeting of his executive and disciplinary committees, and they instruct selectors at all levels not to consider players guilty of misconduct. Heldenhays is given no formal hearing. His judge and jury, the television camera, and he is never officially punished. It is only much later, after he fails to make the Springbok team, that it becomes known that the rugby board would have vetoed his selection. ...can never be condoned or supported by the SARB. From my point of view, he should have been given a suspension and uh, everyone in the sundry would know what the suspension is and then once, that, once he's served that sentence, he's back ready to play again, not only for his club or his province, but also for the South African team. So we have the replacement, Hika Reed has come on at hooker. And it is Northern Transvaal ball. Left for play in this half, only about three minutes of ordinary time. And the ball out here to Kunis coming into the line. And he left it available for Hippie Nell to kick it up. And Crowley is there inside his 22 as he's challenged there by Paul Buertis and Christo Spannenberg. That's Crowley. And that's Buertis not kicking his up and unders as well as usual. He normally times them rather better. That's Victor Simpson, Gary Wetton. And Frank Shelford, this is good driving forward play. Mark Shaw, the last man with the ball. Loveridge back to Wayne Smith. And he's got a few guys with him this time. And out it goes Victor Simpson. And there is uh, Mike Clamp. Clamp will score, being chased by Buddha. Mike Clamp is going to score, though. And Mike Clamp over for a lovely try. Try there by Mike Clamp. And that was better passing. They had the overlap. And Mike Clamp looking pretty pleased with himself. Murray makes Ted at the back. Loveridge, a long one out to Smith, to Billy Osborne. And Shelford, at least uh, the Simpson, Victor Simpson, who had such a good game in the first match. Good ball back to Loveridge. Loveridge setting up his forwards. Mark Shaw, who's having a very good game indeed. Cowboy Shaw from Manawatu. And back it comes to Loveridge. Pass out there to Wayne Smith. He has Clamp with him, but he's tackled. Shelford doing good work. And it is all New Zealanders now. And they want the second phase ball. Loveridge going around the blind side. Hika Reed is there. Crichton is there. And As Uli Schmidt punches there. Gary Wetton on the ground. Referee Muller again consults his touch judge and returns to tell Schmidt, I saw you punch. Well, it's Gary Wetton down again. Is and uh, it was certainly superb control by the All Blacks. And we'll see it again. Hika Reed, number 21, going in there. There's Gary Wetton, number five. There he picks it up. The referee, the touch judge, has already got his flag up. So the ball must have been out before that that came back to Gary Wetton. 
Louis Moorman there taking it cleanly for Northern Transvaal out to Nas Buerta. What do he do now? There's the grubber kick through. In the way was Wayne Smith. And a loose ball. Northerns get it. Back to Uli Schmidt. Uli Schmidt flicking it out to Buertis on the far side. And but he's tackled and uh, the referee's giving a high tackle. Whistle. Head high tackle by Mike Clamp. Well, I suppose, Chick, if ever nice Buerta has had a pressure kick, this is it. He's yes. had them before. He had one in a test match against the British Lions in 1981, was a Chick, I think, from the touchline in Port Elizabeth in driving rain. Yes. This one. Hush falls well, over the crowd as Buerta takes well. aim. He connects, and the ball curls towards its target, only to find the near upright and rebound into play. The New Zealanders have won again by a single point, the man with the golden boot showing himself to be only human after all, and a brutal match is over. And the referee is looking at his watch. And again, I don't think the guys realise how hard the Savagan players are, and um, they certainly realised during and after that game that... Uh, these guys here are hard and they play for 80 minutes. And that was just another hard game and uh, another one-pointer again. So, um, you know, I think we got a lot out of that game, even mm -hmm. though it wasn't a, a great spectacle of a game. It was uh, a typical hard Northern Transvaal all back in Canada that uh, I've been on or played in twice before and uh, this one was no different. Nice yeah. border. It's amazing the amount of criticism that he gets through the media, in particular. Um, to us, he is a, a great player. He, he's been criticised because he kicks too much, and probably at times he, he may do, but he's got other gifts that we saw in that game and uh, since. And he's a, a very gifted player. He's got a tremendous head on him. He not only can kick well, he can get himself out of trouble time and time again. It's obviously a part of the game over here that you know, the blocks on either side of the jumper supports a part of the effect that we think they lift. And uh, there's no doubt about it. If a player goes up and stays up, he's got to be lifted. There's no doubt about that. But it seems to be an accepted part of the game here, where elsewhere in the world it isn't. And the referees, uh, referee as such, and it's something that we're just not used to at home. And he said, with South Africa not playing international rugby that of often, there's not very much of a cross-pollination of ideas and how the different countries adapt to laws. Because we also, in South Africa, we play under how the laws are interpreted by our referees. Persistent rumours that the players were paid big money were constantly denied. Almost to a man, every international player scoffs at an outdated amateur code. The thin line already crossed in Australia and France. Any benefits derived from this tour would not make these players more guilty than their predecessors. What I think it's done is uh, force the International Rugby Board to reassess its own position. The problems which have been created have been created by the fact that... Um, for one reason or another, the All Blacks didn't come to South Africa last year and the British Lions are not going this year. And the international board members have tended to hide behind uh, the uh, climate of world opinion. What they've lost sight of the fact is that their players are determined to go to South Africa, either officially or unofficially. And I think that this tour will uh, concentrate their minds wonderfully on the uh, touring schedules for the future. And how do you think would it influence them? Well, because they know very well that if, if they don't organise tours to South Africa, and if they don't make sure that their players get there, then people, other people, will take the players themselves. I travelled up from uh, Sydney to Hong Kong, sitting next to Alan Jones, the Australian coach. And uh, Alan made it very clear that uh, the Australian players were determined to go to South Africa. Now, he said, if we as a union don't reflect their wishes, he said, we shall fail. He said, not only that, they will go under other auspices, and it's much better that, we, that they go under the official Australian Rugby Union auspices so that their uh, tour can be controlled. He said, if, they, if we don't organise that tour, then sure as God made Kerry Packer, somebody else will. It was nice having breakfast, a long breakfast with, let's say, the Australians who have been denied.
you know, the opportunity of coming here and chatting to these great players, you know, who went over and won the Grand Slam. But in themselves, they can't claim much because they haven't come to South Africa and beaten us here. And, you, you know, the Poitivans and the Slacks and the Twinemans and these guys chatting to you and you yourself finding out that their burning and desire to come here and play against us. Australia will follow. Um, and I think you'll find France will follow straight after them. So it's a case of now saying, well, let's get some control over this and let's um, have the IRB and our member unions at least recognise where we're coming from.